Hi there, this is Lynn Allen. Welcome to another Tips and Tricks Tuesday video. I hope you're doing well. Today, I'm going to be talking about a feature that, actually multiple features that I've been dying to talk to you about. Just wanted to wait until enough of you were up on the AutoCAD release, release 10 in this case, where parametrics were introduced in order to follow along. So I kind of gave away what I was gonna talk about, parametrics. Oh my goodness, so up until now, only our more advanced products like Inventor and Revit have had parametrics in them, but now they're in AutoCAD. And they're very powerful, and they're actually pretty easy to use. You just need to, to get out there and try them, and I'm gonna help you figure out how to use them, all right? So, taking a look at the screen, I have just a basic floor plan, not, nothing exciting, no, no interior walls or anything like that yet. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to build the garage, all right? So I'm just gonna go in the polyline command, and I'm gonna draw just a beautiful garage. Do do do. Okay, so any of you want to hire me to be your designer, let me know, right? It looks pretty bad. I don't know what kind of car is going to fit in there. So I want to fix my garage, and I'm going to do that by using constraints, geometric constraints. I'm going to come up here to the parametric tab, and you'll see that there are a variety of constraints over here. Like this one here is for parallel. It will force objects to be parallel, or this will force objects to be perpendicular, or we can force objects to be concentric. These are a lot like object snaps, except that they stay with the geometry, and they won't let the geometry change after the fact. Like we have a perpendicular object snap, but after we use it, we can change those lines any way we want to. Not is the case with our constraints. If you want to get rid of the constraints, you have to delete them. All right, otherwise that geometry is always gonna stay perpendicular no matter what you do. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's start off with parallel. I'm gonna select this line here and watch closely and this line here, and you will see that now they are both parallel. And they have little, these little icons here to let you know. They're actually called constraint bars, which sounds like a place where you might get a drink. Um, constraint bars that indicate to you that those two lines are parallel. Now did you also notice that the line that I selected first, that this guy over here, is the one that won the battle as far as who changed to who. I picked this line first, it did not change. The second line became parallel to the first one. We'll see that again. All oh, these other lines already look kind of parallel. Let me kind of mess them all up. Okay, so let's turn off. We don't want our quick properties on right now. Okay, let's try this again. Let's do another parallel. Now watch which line I decide to pick first. I'll pick this, this diagonal one here and the second one and once again, you'll notice that the first line won and the second line adapted to the first one, all right? So that's kind of the, one of the first rules of geometric constraints. <laughs> the first object wins, key piece of information, right? And you'll see I have these little images, just like I said, that show me what goes with what. So if you get confused or if you open up somebody else's drawing that has parametrics in it, it's easy for you to figure out what's going on. You can move these around. I mean, geez, you can move these anywhere you want to. <laughs> You know, mess with your coworkers, move them over here. But I like to leave them exactly where they are. I don't really see a good reason to move them unless they're in the way. All right, let's do one, let's do a two, couple more. Let's do a perpendicular. Now, do you remember your good old days of math? If I throw one 90 degree angle in here, the whole thing is gonna be squared off, right? But now it looks like a rectangle. Well, it is a rectangle. And you'll see that if I try to make changes to it, it's just not gonna let me. It's only gonna let me, let me make changes that follow the geometric rules that I put on it. All right, so does that make sense? Let's do one more. I want this wall right here to line up with this wall right here in my floor plan. All right, so that would be collinear. So I'm gonna come up here and select collinear. Once again, remember the first object wins, so we're gonna pick our floor plan so we don't accidentally rotate our floor plan. And I'll pick that line right there. And from this point forward, that wall on the garage will always line up with that wall on my floor plan. All right, so far so good. You following me so far? I mean, a couple of things. If you don't want all of those to all of those constraint bars to show up, you can hide them. You can show them, and so on and so forth. So I like to see them. I like to know what's going on. But if they bug you, you can turn them off. All right, so let's take a look at the geometric constraints that we can use. We'll look at most of them. Um, coincident. If we want two objects to always meet at the same point, you could use coincident. Concentric. If you have two circles or an arc in a circle and you want them to have the same center, for example, you can lock 
any part of your geometry in place to a coordinate so that it will never move off that coordinate, like a great big huge anchor, all right? If you want, that's another one that's fixed. We did per perpendicular and we did parallel, horizontal and vertical, that's pretty straightforward. Forcing objects to be horizontal or vertical. We have a tangent, that might be something that you might want to use. One of my favorites is symmetric. And very helpful if you have mirrored images. Imagine if you set up one side of a room to be symmetrical with the other. So whatever you change you made on one would automatically update on the other. Oh, that's very powerful. And then equals, that has to do with mostly with distances. Maybe you have a wall that's one length and this other wall should always be the same length. In fact, we might even do that in our little exercise, okay? So that's just in a nutshell. Remember, these are really short and sweet. So I'm only gonna show you one more thing and then you'll have to, we'll save the rest for later on down the road, okay? Here I have a floor plan. I'm not gonna come in here and do perpendicular, perpendicular, parallel, parallel. I am way too lazy for that. I want AutoCAD to do that work for me and it is actually happy to do that for me if you have existing geometry. So you can use it as your building geometry or you can use it after the fact. So first off, I'm gonna hit this arrow right here and we're gonna take a look at some constraint settings because I'm gonna ask AutoCAD to put as many geometric constraints on my floor plan as it can find and these are the choices it's going to work with. So you might decide you want some on or some off. That's completely up to you, all right? So I got them all on. I'm gonna go for it, all right. So auto constraint. I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna select my floor plan and select it like that. My mouse is just being really nitpicky today. It's not playing along with me at all. I might have to get a new one, which will make me sad because I love it. <laughs> I'm kind of attached to it. I'm gonna hit an enter now, watch your screen. AutoCAD put as many constraints on there as it could. And remember, it'll, remember, it will show you exactly, come on mouse, you can do it. What goes with what? Oh, that one goes with that, that goes with that. There's an equal one here. What does this equal one go to? Oh, those two lines are equal to each other. We can add another equal in. I could come in here and I could pick this one and I could pick this one. Now watch him. First guy's gonna win. This one's gonna have to get a little bit longer to accommodate and did you notice that my garage moved with it at the same time? All right, so I don't wanna take too long on these short tips. This is just the tip of the iceberg, but I want you to try to start to work with these parametrics. These are gonna make your design smart you're gonna put design intent into your drawing files and they're gonna get smarter than ever so that when you make modifications to them later down the road, even though I know your designs never change, you will see that the, the original design intent will remain intact and that's really important. All right, try it. You won't get it unless you try it. I'll see you back here in two more weeks with more information on constraints and parametrics. Thank you so much for joining me.